Hello, my name is Joseph Matry. I am a toxicology fellow at the Rocky Mountain Poison Center in Denver, Colorado, and this video is a tutorial on gastric lavage. So first, a little history. Back in the 80s, when people owned Commodore computers and techno was cool, gastric lavage was practiced on a routine basis. However, since then, multiple studies have demonstrated this practice to be ineffective and potentially dangerous when applied to all poison patients. Therefore, these days, you should not use gastric lavage routinely in toxic ingestions. Having said that, Gastric lavage is not dead. Gastric lavage may be indicated when a patient presents within one to two hours after ingestion of a dangerous quantity of a very toxic substance for which there is no good antidote or therapy. For example, verapamil. Yes, we have other therapies for verapamil such as calcium, vasopressors, high dose insulin, and lipid emulsion therapy, but if a patient takes a large enough dose of verapamil, you won't be able to save them with all the insulin and lipid in the world. The same goes for propranolol and tricyclic antidepressants. Another example is colchicine, which has no good antidote, and if the patient absorbs a fatal dose, they are left dying slowly and painfully. If you are not sure how dangerous the drug is, or if you should gastric lavage, call your poison center at 1-800-222-1222. Okay, now that we have covered when to use it, it's time to talk about how to use it. As with any procedure, you want to have your equipment set up before you start. You will need suction, intubation equipment, an ET tube stabilizing device, a large bore OG tube, 36 to 40 French in adult, 24 to 28 French in kids. An NG tube can be used with liquid ingestions, but otherwise is not large enough. Go big or go home. For the patient's sake, have a jelly lubricant for the OG tube. Lavaging fluid. In adults, use either warm normal saline or warm water. In children, use warm normal saline since there are case reports of hyponatremia occurring when children were gastric lavaged with water. And finally, 50 grams of activated charcoal. Now that we have our equipment ready, meet Stan, our friendly simulation patient. Stan is presenting to the ER after taking a large dose of Rapamil in a self-harm attempt. Now Stan is awake and alert, so I don't need to manage his airway, but if he was sedated, or if I expected the drug that he took was going to sedate him soon, for example, tricyclic antidepressants, then I would go ahead and protect his airway by intubating. So step one is make sure the airway is secure. Aspiration is the most common complication of gastric lavage, so don't use it for sedated patients or patients who have lost their airway reflexes unless you intubate them first. Step two, if desired, place an ET tube stabilizing device to keep the mouth of a non-compliant patient open. Step three, Measure out the length of OG tube you need to reach the stomach and lubricate the tube with hydroxycellulose jelly. Step four, position the patient. In general, it is recommended to place the patient in the left lateral head down position in order to maximize gastric emptying. However, the upright position may be required in some circumstances. For example, the restrained patient. Avoid the supine position since this will place the patient at the greatest risk of aspiration. Step 5. Pass the tube gently into the esophagus. There are cases of esophageal perforation from OG tube placement, so don't get too aggressive. Step 6. Verify tube placement with insufflation. You do not want to fill the patient's lungs with fluid. Step 7. Aspirate the gastric contents. Step 8. Gently infuse 200 to 300 milliliter aliquots of warm water or warm normal saline. In children, Use 10 milliliters per kilogram of warm normal saline. Aspirate the fluid back out. Do not irrigate with force. You do not want to push the drug into the small bowel where more absorption of the drug will occur. Some toxicologists advocate administering activated charcoal prior to lavage so that any drug that passes into the small bowel will be absorbed to the charcoal, but there is little evidence to support this practice. Repeat this process of 200 to 300 milliliters in, 200 to 300 milliliters out, until the fluid you are aspirating is clear of particulate matter. Step 9. Administer 50 grams of activated charcoal slurry through the OG tube. In children, the dose is 0.5 to 1 gram per kilogram. Step 10. Pull the tube back out and you are done. So a quick recap. The only current indication for gastric lavage is when a patient presents less than 1 to 2 hours after ingestion of a significant quantity of a very toxic substance for which there is no good antidote or therapy. When in doubt, call the Poison Center at 1-800-222-1222. Remember to protect the airway. Place the patient in the left lateral 
head down position. Make sure the tube is in the stomach. Aspirate the stomach contents. Infuse 200 to 300 milliliters slowly. Aspirate the fluid back out. Repeat until clear and top it off with a dose of activated charcoal before pulling the tube. Thanks for listening and good luck, Lavage.